You're live. Cool. So let's go through um, the routine start to finish. Again, this is exactly what I do for my clients. With every session, we're going to start with the solar plexus and the adrenal reflexes. Uh, that's going to be the solar plexus, which is just below the ball of the foot in line with the third toe. Um, and we're going to hold that for about 30 seconds. Um, and then for those of you who are advanced in the, in the program, remember that our three fingers are on that dorsal pedal pulse. So if you'd like to play with pulse assessment, you totally can. Feeling for the rate of the pulse, the strength of the pulse, um, physically in terms of like blood pressure and heart rate, like whether or not the heart rate is super high, whether or not the blood pressure, that thump thump is really strong. What if it's weak? What if you can't find it? Like that all tells us valuable information as we're just holding the point. Okay. Then we move to the adrenal gland reflex, which just for learning purposes is going to be um, halfway down zone three in between the first and second toe. So anatomically, we're actually just above where the proximal heads of the first and second metatarsals meet, in between the plantar fascia and the big toe flexor tendon. But you'll see it on the map as the adrenal reflex. And again, holding for 30 seconds. From an endocrine perspective, the endocrine adrenal reflex tells us where somebody's chemical balance is. Yeah? If they have a knot in their adrenal reflex, maybe they've been hyperproducing cortisol. Um, whereas the solar plexus tells us a little bit more about their immediate nervous system concerns. Like, are they coming in statically frazzled? Or do they have like a long-term drip of stress going through their system? So those are our two. Um, Alex, if you could throw me two hot towels and a snow dry. So we do hot towels before and after our sessions here at the Institute because it's lovely. <laughs> and it cleans the feet, but mostly because it's lovely. <laughs> Jeez. From an assessment perspective, the heat also tells us a lot of information. Um, when we wrap the feet in the hot towels, what areas stay cold tell us a lot of information about where somebody's circulation might be lacking, um, where they have stagnant fluid, lots of, lots of interesting details that we can pick apart. Now this is, no matter what system you're working on, you do this, right? Correct. Okay. Yep. When a client comes in and they write something on a health history form, we have to remember that clients lie <laughs> and they don't know their bodies. So just as a general rule, like no shade against clients, like clients are lovely, love my clients, but at the same time, we need to respect that when somebody comes in in the fit of pain, yeah, or maybe they forgot something, they forgot a detail, <laughs> uh, we then as reflexologists need to keep an open mind and say, look, maybe the system that they're concerned about is not the system that we need to be concerned about. Just because somebody's coming in with back pain, if we just focus on the back reflexes, what if the back pain is coming from the hips or the knees? They didn't tell us about knee issues, but what if we find them? What if we find tension in the knees? Then we'll be able to direct them, hey, the reason why you're stretching your low back and it's not working is because it's not coming from the low back. Same thing with digestive issues, same thing with hormone issues. It's all, it's all feedback. And so when a client comes in and we think that they're coming in for a particular system issue, uh, we just need to be aware that we might find something very different in the reflexes themselves. And does the product feel active that you're going to use to the, to the guest? No. It doesn't. Okay. It doesn't feel like tingly or cool. No. Okay. It has peppermint in it, so they might feel a little bit, but mm -hmm. with me, with this on my arm right now, it doesn't produce a tingle. And that's a mixture of beeswax? Beeswax and grapeseed, yeah. I'm actually working on perfecting the mixture right now. Um, 
I, you could use you could use a shea butter. You could use any sort of thicker product. Just stay away from like the oils or runny creams because they tend to make things a little bit too slippery. Why the grape seed oil? Why yeah. that one in particular? Is there any because I had her on hand. <laughs> <laughs> um, what? Did you say her? Because I had it on oh, hand. I said her. Yes. <laughs> Well, I mean her. I mean <laughs> the grape seed. Right. Um, the she, bottle. She is delicious. She's pretty in purple. Um, uh, grape seed. Grape seed as an herb is also astringent. Um, so when we look at that, at that oil specifically, having those slightly astringent qualities of mm -hmm. grape, um, it tends to be absorbed into the system a little bit better because of that. But just that's other stuff versus a jojoba, which is much thicker, much slimier, much more nourishing to dry feet, but can get you in trouble if somebody has a little bit too much fluid. Okay, so right now we're doing the relaxation techniques. Um, uh, we'll outline the six when we kind of go over what that looks like this afternoon. That's the heel rotation. Heel rotation. Sandy misses you, by the way. Oh, Sandy, why aren't you here, girl? Why aren't you here? Love you. Okay. Um, <laughs> you're right down the street. <laughs> there are people in Africa who wish that they could come in right now. <laughs> Just kidding. Um, okay, so after we're done with the relaxation techniques, the first area that we're going to walk is the spine, which is the medial arch. Yeah, We're technically going to walk the lumbar spine and thoracic spine. So we start just above the heel, and we're going to thumb walk to that proximal head of the first metatarsal. And then about there, the thumb can't really go anymore, so we have to switch our leverage and continue walking. We're gonna stop just below the bunion because walking over bones does not feel nice. And this is the spine? The spine, specifically L5 to about T6. And we do that three times. Then we move on to the toes, which represent what? The head. The head, fabulous, well done. And we say the head, but remember that the head contains many different organs and organ systems, yeah? The head is digestive because of the mouth, yeah? The head is endocrine. Mm -hmm. The head is nervous. The head is skeletal. The head is muscular. The head is lymphatic. The head is respiratory, yeah? It's so, yeah, it's sensory as well. Yeah. Like, think about that. Yeah. We're not just working the head, we're working multiple systems at once mm. through the toes. Is pituitary big toe? Pituitary is big toe, pituitary pineal. Mm -hmm. That's where the reflex is located in the center of the big toe. Oh, also thyroid, you know, or mm -hmm. thyroid, parathyroid in the neck. On the big toe? Yeah, on the big toe. Mm -hmm. On the medial surface of the proximal phalanx. Oh. See, this is, this is like, you learn it and you just get to whip it out, right? So it's actually the neck, the spinal reflexes are the medial side of that big toe. Yeah, the thyroid would be just on the inside because where is thyroid located? Mm -hmm. Yeah, on the medial aspect of that head, neck, throat. So that's where we put the reflex. If you know your anatomy, yeah, it all starts to make sense. And we're going to treat the big toe. Um, we walk all the toes three times, but specifically we walk the big toe separately because it's so strong and because it's so special. It just <laughs> it deserves its own little its own little routine. A lot of people have tension here. Um, we just need to respect that and address that individually. And when you do the toes, you start with the big toe and work lateral. Start with the fifth toe and work medial. The pinky toe. Yep. Okay. And then you go back to the pinky toe and work yep. lateral. And then... Yep. So we do each toe three times, starting with the fifth digit, mm -hmm. and we end on the big toe, and then do big toe routine, and that's it. Do big toe how many times? The big toe, we would we would massage it three times, yeah, and then we would do a separate routine, which we'll outline. Okay. Yeah, when we actually do the work. After we're done with the toes, we're going to move to the dorsal surface. 
dorsal surface contains all our lymphatic reflexes, but also through and through reflexes for the digestive system, the reproductive system, lots of fun stuff through here. But largely we work the dorsal surface for lymphatic. So we're doing a nice lymphatic pump, which on a normal client, you won't really notice a difference, but if you get a client with swelling, you're literally pushing fluid out of the foot, and it's just, it's so delicious to see that. <laughs> okay, yeah, I was going to ask about that, like the, the going, like, yeah. starting here, and then going, it's not like coming back. Exactly. Because starting here, and it always is. Because what we're doing is we're trying to get that flow back. Yeah. After that pump, then we're going to do a little bit of a metatarsal shake. Um, it, we're, we're actually, like, not to violate scope of practice, but we are jostling the bones. Mm -hmm. Yeah, We're getting that warm, soft tissue to move, and we're using the bones as leverage to do that. Really helpful for anybody who has, like, neuromas or anything that has joint impingement or bone misalignment issues. Like, we really need to get in there to get some of that structural postural tissue of the foot to to warm and loosen well and that works along the same theory as muscle energy technique right. we use the hard surfaces that aren't technically part of our scope of practice as handles so that we can move the soft tissue passively deep tissue foundations with scott is another class <laughs> coming up for those of you who <laughs> Then we're actually going to walk down those dorsal valleys. So the fingers are curling into the spaces between the bones. Yeah. Oh, and here's a nice, lovely point. So yeah. let's let's talk about point work. Um, so we have a point that's in the lower back reflexes. Seems to be a common theme. Um, <laughs> and we're holding this spot. And the first thing that we do is we press the point. Yeah, very Are simple. Are you pressing the point right now? I am pressing the point. Wow. I know. Um, I don't hardly feel anything. Exactly. Nor do you need to, right. because the body is feeling it. Um, so I'm holding the point. Where is that point? Where well, and here's the thing. When I talk about points, I'm talking about textural changes in the reflexes. It's not like this is gallbladder 26. Uh -huh. Yeah? It's not like this is spleen 1. This isn't a determined point. This is a spot along a reflex area that shows me textural change, which I then apply pressure to in order to help facilitate some form of release or balancing. Yeah, And that's part of the stuff that reflexology doesn't really explain well on a basic level, is when we talk about reflex points, we're really talking about reflex areas and specific points within those areas that need to be manipulated. So it's like a knot, but right. it's not a knot. Exactly. Yeah. yeah. In this case, it is a knot. Like, the bone is stuck. There's a fascial kind of wrapping that I need to just unwind in this space. So I'm actually going to do a little bit of rotation to unwind that. Um, mm. I know. <laughs> just magic. So once you found the point, you are actually, you did a little bit of mm -hmm. jostling just jostling, to wake it up. And now you're rotating. So you're, you're helping to work underneath that, that, that point that you're holding. Exactly. Uh -huh. Exactly. And it released. So I'm moving on. So in a way, it's like when you're first doing a massage on someone you've never worked with before. Mm -hmm. and it's kind of a relaxation massage, but you're feeling yes. the knots. Exactly. And then when you find the knots and you stop and you jostle them, mm -hmm. so you get all the knots worked out, then you can go deep tissue. Right. Okay. Exactly. But deep tissue doesn't necessarily mean deep. Sometimes yep. reflexes are literally, I'll, I'll engage the point with about a 3 to 4 out of 10 in pressure. Yeah. Yep. Um, and then sometimes I actually need to loosen up mm -hmm. and lighten up in order to access a more superficial kind of like nerve feather would be a good way to think of it, like a more superficial branch of that nerve. Or like a lymph. Yeah, or like a lymph. So it just depends on what we find. Okay. And then other times I'm going through the foot. And yeah. endocrine, where you're working with all these hormones, mm -hmm. are they light or It depends. Deep? It depends. Okay. Yep, there is no hard and fast rule. Some reflexology schools will tell you that there's a hard and fast rule, that you need to go like so light that the client can't feel it, or that you need to go so deep that the client is in tears, mm -hmm. I promote the middle ground. Okay. And, uh, I thank you for that. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and when a client comes in and you don't know what you're going to find, yeah. 
you know, even if you've seen a client for 10 years straight, they might come in with something that is totally different. So always approach with caution. You know, never go guns a into the reflexes. So you're, you massage around that point to loosen it, to jo- jostle yeah. it. Yeah. Just whatever, whatever the body asks until for. Until it starts to unwind. Until it starts to unwind. Yeah. yeah. Sometimes the reverse happens. Sounds so good. Sometimes <laughs> when we hit a spot, a spot is empty. Yeah. And so in those instances, we're actually waiting it to push back and fill against mm-hmm. our pressure. Mm-hmm. Yeah. So if, if a client says to you while you're working on them, oh, that's a tender spot. I don't care. Um, like a client now the reason why I don't care and right now just for posterity's sake so we just finished the chest lung reflexes now we're into the digestive Um, when a client comes in and they say oh that's a sensitive spot yeah of course I want to be respectful and I want to make sure that I'm not like killing them yeah Um, but even with light pressure points can be sensitive so it's not it's not like a, a phenomenon I also want to take note of where that sensitivity is from a reflex perspective because it tells me what systems might be compromised. Do you, I mean, so if they say, oh, that was a tender spot, would you hold that spot? You could if you feel something there. Okay. But just because a client experiences sensitivity doesn't mean that the reflex is congested. Okay. Yeah. This is, in some ways, a conversation between you and the body. The client has nothing to do with this. Um, at this point, they could pass out. They could be singing Old MacDonald Had a Farm. They could be talking about you know, their family stuff, like whatever they want to do, whatever makes them feel happy. But you, as the practitioner, you're palpating the reflexes and asking the body, hey, what's, what's going on here? Talk to me. What are some of the techniques you would use for an empty space or reflex point? The same ones we would use for a full one. Um, You hold the point, you wait for the body to respond. If the body pulls you in deeper, you go deeper. If the body starts to shut you out, you go lighter. And then you hold the point until the body releases you from that point. It's that simple. It's It's really not rocket science. It's just literally about having a conversation with the body. Hence the 45 minutes on a foot. Yeah, hence, uh, like, it can really be drawn out. It really can. Um, Normally I'm spending anywhere between 15 to 45 seconds on a point, just in general. But I've held points for minutes. So it just depends on what's needed. And then sometimes you go to hold a reflex point and you're like, oh, this point's going to be amazing. And then you hold it and it disappears and you're like, oh, well, that was anticlimactic. <laughs> Do you book 90 minutes per guest just in case no. you need to spend 45 minutes on a foot? Or? I prefer an hour. Right. Um, hands on. Hands on. Not, not with, including the towels and everything. Yeah, including yeah. the towels. It's a 60 minute routine, hands on. And then do you use vibration at all? Yes. Um, not vibration in terms of like tools that produce vibration, but vibration in terms of like holding a point and vibrating that point. Absolutely. Anything that allows the nerves to pick up additional waves of sensation is very good. Um, sometimes I'll do a double point hold, uh, which, um, is sending multiple waves of impulse through the nervous system at the same time, which is very, uh, very much in line with Lynn Booth's work, who does vertical reflex technique. Um, I love her work so much, but the idea of stimulating the point that you want to stimulate, but then sending a secondary stimulus through that nerve pathway to help get to the brain quicker, um, I find that to be very effective. So you're already working with structural integrity. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, there's to get the nerve to move with the vibration. There is no separation between the structural work and the internal work. I just... You know, and reflexology is the modality that really shows us that. Yeah. She's going to walk so good when she gets <laughs> So what you're doing now is you're going back through the same... Right. So now I'm going back to the toes. Yep. So after... So you, com- you completed, completed the bottom of the foot? So after the digestive reflexes, we return to the toes. Gotcha. And then we address the final part of the foot, which is that really, really dense ankle, ankle heel space.
We save the ankle and heel for last because it's so thick, because it needs time to warm up, uh, and because it tends to be very painful on a lot of clients who are coming in. So we kind of let it let it rest for a little bit, but then get it uh, get it last. So why are you going back to the toes now? Because the toes are hypersensitive by nature. They are the feelers of the foot. Um, working them twice is very important from a nervous system perspective because it shows us, one, if the body received our work, like whether or not the toes actually relaxed and opened. But two, we're using the hypersensitivity of the toes in order to, again, remind the body, hey, if you didn't get it the first time, I'd like you to relax, please. <laughs> time to relax. Yeah. Think of it like when you, if you were to cut your heel versus if you were to cut your toe. Like the toes are just naturally more sensitive. Mm -hmm. And so we get to respect that in our routine by working them twice. And your guest is not going to complain. Yeah. <laughs> if you, even if you forget the entire routine, as long as you don't stop, you're fine. <laughs> it's very much like theater. Um, you know, the, the people in the audience don't know. The people in the audience don't care. They just think that it's part of that show. So you you just keep going. As long as you hit every reflex area, which is really all the routine wants you to do anyway, you're fine. And even then, there have been clients where uh, I've forgotten reflex areas, like specific reflex areas, mm -hmm. and those exact reflexes have gotten better between sessions. The body knows what you're trying to do. Yeah, You don't need to to exactly manipulate the reflexes in order to affect the whole body. The digestive re reflexes that you worked with, those mm -hmm. were the pancreas? Uh, no, so pancreas is on the left side, uh -huh. technically. Um, so we were on liver, gallbladder, up top. Okay. And then, like, ascending colon, ileocecal valve, half of transverse on, on okay, so the proximal. Okay, so that's the liver, gallbladder side? Yes. Okay. Right side is liver, gallbladder side. So we're deviating from technique just a little bit because she's got some pretty intense fascial stuff happening in the glute reflexes. So on the lateral side of the calcaneus, we have the glute reflexes. Um, and I'm holding these points because there's just it's just so tight um, muscularly in that space. So we're just... La, la, la. Same and the weight yeah. of their foot. The weight of the foot. Yeah. Exactly. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So I'm just I'm just providing leverage. Now I'm providing soft leverage because I'm using the pads of my fingers. Mm -hmm. If I wanted to provide hard leverage, I could curl more and get the actual tip of my bone into that space. And I'll probably do that in a second. But right now I'm just letting I'm letting the tissue fall around me. Yeah. Yeah. And this is the this is the art behind the science. Like, this is what I can't necessarily teach you. You just kind of have to do it in the heat of the moment as the body requests for it. And that was, that was, that was rather lovely. That was, a good, that was a good release. There's still a bunch of junk in here. I'm not thrilled with it. I get junk in the trunk? Junk in the trunk. <laughs> we would never say that to a client. <laughs> but yes. Last month I this had is, three... Oh, go ahead. No, this is like your first foot massage? My first reflexology. Mm -hmm. Yes. Well, you've well been, you uh, were working. No, wait. Though. Last month I was here, mm -hmm. and I had one from a student. But this is the first time from somebody who's been uh, doing it. For Sam. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so, so there's gonna be gunk, and you know, if it, if you haven't worked it, then there's gonna be gunk. So, this is this brings up a, a rabbit hole kind of thing about toxicity in the mm -hmm. system. Um, I'm, I'm of the opinion that the body is not fundamentally toxic. Um, a lot of people are obsessed with detox. They're obsessed with, like, we need to work out the issues. We need to get rid of all this stuff that's bottled in the tissues. Don't treat the body like the enemy. And don't think that it constantly needs to be cleaned. Like, your body is messy on purpose. And we're starting to learn a lot of that with gut research and, you know, things like that. So don't... Don't necessarily think that the, the goal is to get the reflexes clean yeah, or clear, because they will probably never be totally clean or clear. And the goal isn't, the goal also, like clients who, um, and right now we're into the cuboid notch, uh, the clients that come in are always like, wow, I didn't have any tender points today. I must be improving. That's also kind of wrong. Yeah. Because it's not necessarily about what they feel during the session. It's what we feel in the reflexes that the body is trying to tell us. Yeah, after our training, when I took your class,
class two years ago. After the first day, we all came back the next day and had things that were different mm -hmm. about us. My period came a week early. One of the girls in the class almost pooped her pants on the ride home because her digestive was uh, She had to pull over. All of us had something happen like that. And unfortunately, like, we can't predict what those things are going to be. Mm -hmm. uh, all we can do is do the routine, balance the points that the body asks us to balance, and let the body heal itself. How the body chooses to heal itself is between the body and the person. Um, and that's the difficult part, is when clients ask, well, how will the session affect me? You don't know. We don't know. Mm -hmm. We really okay. don't. Fun too. Everybody reacts differently. Yeah, and Just everybody's like in a different like, place. You know, yeah. Like, not everything's going to work for everybody, you know, and it's... Right. And they don't even know mm -hmm. most of the time right. what's going on with their body. Exactly. <laughs> you know, back to the detoxing thing. It seems to me that some that um, you know our body's made to to fight toxins, mm. to fight the stuff that comes in environmentally and everything else. Yeah. And when we we skip over that body need to to work in its proper sense, and we go ahead and cleanse it and and go so try and go so clean, it seems to me like I don't know if anybody's ever smelled anybody like that. <laughs> yeah, too clean, too yeah. sterile. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and that's, like, reflexology is excellent to help the detox process, to help move things around, mm. but it's the same thing, like, water is detoxifying. Like, we don't need to jab the liver reflex in order to get somebody to let go of stuff. What if the stuff isn't ready to be let go of in the first place? Mm -hmm. Like, stop trying to control somebody else's healing process. Mm -hmm. oh, now, when you're control. manipulating you know the tissue mm -hmm. are you doing small circles it depends or lines it yeah it just varies so when we're when we're doing our thumb walk uh -huh. yeah the the alternating pressure that allows us to access the reflexes that that is consistent but when we stick like when we find a point and we hold on to it and we actually manipulate that point uh -huh. we're doing something different for each point that we have based on, again, what the, what the body dictates. Mm -hmm. So as you hold that point, you apply that static pressure, and then sometimes you're like, you know, it feels like it needs to be circled. Yeah, otherwise sometimes it's like, I just need to hold this, and it's gonna, it's gonna let go on its own. Yeah, sometimes I need to go in at a specific angle, like almost puncture the reflex, but it just depends on kind of what you find. What, so it's like, that is like deep t mm -hmm. tissue, though, where you're t whatever you find, you know, mm -hmm. however you get through it. Yep. Yeah. Exactly. What you found on there today, that would definitely be consistent with me uh, having a lot of sciatic. Yes. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Constantly Between the back and forth. The low back reflex that we found, you know, before we even touched you, and then the the yeah. um, bound glutes. It's all it's all part of that. Is yeah. it your sleeping position? Do you have your legs like folded up like this when oh, you sleep? No. Nope. You no, on your side? I sleep. I actually rotate mm. all night long. You're moving all the way So down. let's, <laughs> yeah, so let's take a look at the lower back reflex. So we can see, um, actually, let's, so we can see the difference between these two low back reflexes, yeah? How we have this fluid pocket mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. through here. Uh, that's on the left side, but not the right side. Mm -hmm. Yeah, so this is low back. This is lumbar spine. So when we see this on the lumbar spine, this is my marker for herniation. Yeah, and it's not present on the right, so we would look at the left low back as needing to be treated a little bit more specifically versus the right, and that tells us that there's fluid retention, that there's literal bulging of the disc, bulging of the lower back reflexes, and that's the kind of thing. Like, it's not, it's not rocket science. It's like, ooh, there's a bubble here. <laughs> this is weird. This should not be here. It's not here on the other side. What could this be? Well, where is it? It's in the low back reflexes. What could possibly bubble or bulge out of the low back reflexes? Oh, a disc. Mm -hmm. You know, it's it's simple, mm. simple stuff. Anyway. All and right. so now you're keeping the foot warm because yes. you just got all that energy. Yeah, just trying to trying to make it nice. Okay. So. The um, good thing about the routine and the technique is that we do the exact same thing on both sides. So you're really only learning one, one routine for both sides.
Somebody pointed out how open her feet are as well. Right. Yes, yes. They and when we look at that from a, um, from a traditional Chinese medicine perspective, that's very kidney meridian lacking tonification. Um, when we look at that from a structural side, that's literally the glutes and the IT band pulling the hips open, the need to strengthen the, the um, adductors, the core. Mm. You know, I have adductors. really problems with my adductors. <laughs> Crazy. And then same thing, we're gonna start with the spine after we're done with the relaxation techniques. What, it's still raining? Yes. Oh, <laughs> yes. It's gonna be raining all foot. day. Oh, how long did we, how long did you work on the left foot? Just 30 minutes. 30 minutes. 30 minutes, okay. Yeah, 30, 30. It's nice, a yeah. nice workout. Yeah, that's it. Nothing crazy. It was very nice. <laughs> She's terribly biased. Don't listen to her. I did notice when the people that I worked on, everybody went into such a sedated state. Yeah. They fall asleep usually by the time you're done with. They're at relaxing. least you know, yeah. like I could still ha have a, a, a you know ask them about something or or something like that, but they were definitely like, boom. Right. Yeah. <laughs> and that's part of that is what we talked about before the idea that reflexology is an approachable modality, like they're they're on a bed like they're pillowed they're bolstered they're blanketed maybe you know they're just in that relaxed position you know that's half the magic right there you know put the some soothing music on and you've got combination that when was the last time that you took a midday break to lock yourself in a dark quiet room um, but then from a reflex perspective we're also manipulating the nerves in a way that triggers that relaxation quicker than a normal massage. Now in the feet, do you do a lot, I mean, muscle bodies. Yes. Are there muscle bodies in the toes? I mean, in the feet? Those yeah, I mean, there's there's muscular tissue, there's tendons, there's muscle bellies, like it's... It, there is a muscle belly. Yeah, I mean, right. the flexors and extensors, yeah. Yeah, so, um, so... Of course, you would work the knots to, so that no. energy can flow in. No, that's not. That's a normal foot massage. Yeah, that would be that would be more like anatomical stuff. We're not focused okay. on muscles. We're focused on nerves. On nerves. The yes. focus is actually on structural integrity yep. and nerves. So we're like, um, as an example, in this spot that I'm holding right now, I'm not on the tendon. Yeah. Okay. I'm on the nerve innervation for that point. Nerve innervation. So it's not like I'm targeting that toe flexor tendon. Really interesting. Yeah. Hold, hold, hold. And I actually need to back off a little bit because it's pushing against me. Now you're going to have a, like, <coughs> harder time for somebody that's ticklish. No. Like, tense, like, the whole time. And... That's, that's something that I find really fascinating is clients come in very regularly, like if they've gotten a gift certificate or something and they all tell me they are reluctant to book the appointment because they tend to be ticklish. But I've never had somebody stop a session because it tickled. Mm -hmm. Because we're using a thumb walk and not an effleurage. Mm -hmm. Yeah, we're not gliding over the sensitive nerves. We're not treating them like baby, you know, nerves. We're not... We're not doing that. We're, we're systematically press, 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 press. We're, we're allowing the body to relax underneath kind of the metronome of our pressure instead of just gliding and flourishing and triggering those more sensitive nerves. Back to the dorsal surface and the lymphatic. And what's really interesting is right now, because you are watching me do this technique and you're 
uh, parasympathetic nervous system and your mirror neurons are starting to recreate the effect that the client on the table is having, you are also getting kind of spacey and kind of loopy. <laughs> yeah. Um, and that's exactly what the client on the table is feeling, which your brain is then recreating because we are empathetic beings. Mm -hmm. If we're lucky. Yeah, exactly. Exactly. And it, now science is starting to catch up with that fact and they, they label them as mirror neurons. When we look at somebody having an experience, our brain tries to replicate that experience. Uh -huh. Yeah, which allows us to become more apt for things like survival and using tools, but it also connects us to the people and the clients that we're working with and on. Does that allow for a metaphysical healing? Um, a metaphysical exchange. Healing is not a word that I would personally use for that process, although some it could be classified as that, but when when somebody has when somebody has pain, that is technically part of the healing process. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So me experiencing somebody else's pain in my body during a session, you know, allows me to heal, but through that pain. It's not traditional in terms of our thought of like, healing means no pain, yeah. But when we think of it in terms of communion. Would we feel the effect on the same foot or the other, I mean the same side or the opposite side? Yes. <laughs> I'm not sure what she just asked and then you said yes. Mm -hmm. Exactly. Um, so, <laughs> Clear as mud. <laughs> so, so when uh, it's the same, it's the same reason why we can't predict how reflexology is going to affect the person. Yeah. All we can do is send the impulses through the nerves. Where they go, that's mm -hmm. the body's dictation. We're going to feel it one way or the other. Right. The same side or the other. So clients, <laughs> what I... What I tell the clients is that there are four things that you should be aware of just so that you don't freak out. The first is going to be facial itching. The second is going to be muscle twitching. The third is going to be breathing changes. The fourth is going to be stomach gurgling. Yeah, all parasympathetic stuff, all nervous system stuff. Um, but when a client has a particular issue, like a, like a problem, um, sometimes as I'm working, yeah, not even working on the reflex associated with that issue, the body will take those impulses and put them right into that spot. Yeah, without me asking. And it's just, it's triggering the healing process before, you know, like again, we, don't, we just have no control over that. Um, that could be on the right side, that could be on the left side, that could be on the top, bottom, we, we have no idea. A lot of times it freaks clients out. A lot of clients on the table and they're like, wow, why does this hurt so much? Wow, oh man, I feel it in here. Oh, that's so weird. I totally forgot about that thing that I didn't tell you about. <laughs> um, but yeah, that's totally a thing. Um, a really common one is, yeah, my sinuses feel more open. I forgot to tell you that I've had chronic sinus issues ever since I was a kid and I can breathe. Like, that kind of stuff. Mm -hmm. So that was breathing, facial twitching, stomach gurgles, and what else? Muscle twitching. Muscle? So now we're back to the digestive reflexes. Last month I had three guests all come in, and they never know, like when I ask them what their issues are, they never have anything to tell me. Right. <laughs> so I just do it. But I noticed I had three women in the span of two weeks that had very high arches, yeah. very high. And I, I pointed it out, I was like, wow, you know, you're not supposed to say that, but they were really high. Yeah. All of them had digestive issues, mm -hmm. and we found out I found out about, about the digestive issue after I mentioned the high arch. Right. And, yeah. Yeah, so the arch itself is the digestive reflexes. Mm -hmm. And so when those are hyper-contracted or when the arches are fallen, both indicate digestive issues. One is more stagnant, one is more stuck, one is more congested, the other is more hyperactive, more irritable. I've been way over. Mm. Yeah, you know, mm. he's at rest. Way <laughs> too too much have I been using my too much pressure. Yeah, and I think compared to what he's he's using. And I think that that's like that's that's the misconception mm -hmm. is the thumb walking is not technically the reflex technique. Like right now, I'm holding a point, mm -hmm. and that's reflexology. 
The thumb walking is just to get you to feel the reflexes. Did you give us something of the actual reflexes? Do we have a... Yes. Okay. I give you the, well, the maps, the charts. Okay. Yeah. And then each week in the online lessons, there's yeah, the there's drawing drawings thing? that... Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay. Okay, gotcha, okay. gotcha, gotcha. Each week or each month? Each month. Did you give everybody the maps and the charts? No, so that's just for the certification oh, program okay. students. Yeah, when they join, they get the, the charts on the wall. Okay. But I mean, again, the maps are the same. If you just Google a reflexology chart, you'll, you'll see like out at the top, chest, lung, upper, lower digestive, lower body. Like that's the, that's the thing. Now you're actually working a much different system now that you're on the other foot though. I mean, not a much different system, but you're working, you're on the left, so it's now you're to the pancreas, to the left side. Right, so... Pancreas, spleen, and heart. the different part of the, di mm -hmm. uh, the colon. Right, exactly. The, the, you know, the intestine. Mm -hmm. I don't know which it is. Yeah, so... If it's small intestine, if it's colon, or... I know, but it's different, though, in the heel. Yes. 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 Yeah. yeah, so the feet are right to right, left to left. So the organs and structures on the right side are on the right foot, organ structures on the left side are on the left foot. So how does that work with the intestines? So it would be on the right side, uh -huh. ileocecal, ascending, half uh -huh. of transverse. And then on the left side, it's the other half of transverse, descending, sigmoid, rectum anus. Okay. Yeah. And then the small intestines are kind of like blah, 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 in between all that. Mm -hmm. So it's half on right, half on left. Okay. Which is the scientific way to say it. <laughs> right. Okay. Right. Exactly. Yeah. Okay. Tom Maxson really liked the quote, the thumb walking is to get you to feel the reflexes. Tom, Tom, I miss you. How are you doing? He's one of our certification graduates that moved away, that abandoned us. No. He has two lovely kids. Actually, his wife, uh, Kayla, was in the program as well, and she was pregnant throughout most of it. And uh, she came to uh, the book signing event just totally, totally pregnant. Mm -hmm. And um, the yeah. next day after we worked on her, she, she went into labor. It was pretty Do you cool. Have a book? Oh, wow. Yes, I have a book. It's called Foot Reading. It's called Foot Reading. Foot Reading. Yep. Available for purchase right here. Right. <laughs> <laughs> Available for purchase and international shipping. <laughs> but again, like, take, take baby steps. Don't try to do it all at once. Mm -hmm. Even, I mean, even reflexologists that I teach, you know, internationally, I'm, I'm up in front of these groups and I'll say, so when you feel different things in the reflexes and like, what do you mean feel different things in the reflexes? I don't understand. Uh -oh. um, and they've been practicing for years. I'm like, okay, so we need to, we need to get you to understand that there's more than just the routine. Yeah. But at the beginning, you need to master the routine. Because yeah. once you start to make that shift from worrying about what your hands are doing to actually feeling what's underneath your hands. That's the magic, but that takes practice. That takes time. All of these functions are voluntary muscles. Hmm? The pancreas, the spleen, the gallbladder, the liver, the colon, all of that movement, and the heart, the lungs, that's all voluntary muscles. Involuntary, right? they involuntary. move on their own. Yeah. We that's don't, yeah. I meant to say. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> gotcha. Right, right. Sorry about that. Yeah. And because of that, they're all regulated by the nervous system. And because the reflexology affects the nervous system, no, we affect them. Is voluntary. No. Right. Semi. Semi. Both. Okay. Yeah. yeah. Your body just passes. Right. Because if you pass out, you still breathe. Because it's like you, when you fall yeah. asleep, okay. right? it, it doesn't. Yeah. 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 It's based on the oxygen and CO2 levels. Yeah. Okay. So we're hitting our last set of reflexes, which is going to be the lower body reflexes around the heel and ankle. And then after we're done with this foot, we're going to do relaxation techniques, finish with hot towels. The first two points that we held at the beginning, we're going to hold at the end, and that is the routine. Which I expect all of you to do without any help this afternoon. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. The bridge to failure. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, we'll go through it step by step, 
and just get you part of it is just getting you comfortable even though you have no idea what you're doing mm -hmm. just doing the work as long as you just do it over and over and over and over even if you don't know what exactly you're doing the body will start to talk to you over time yeah so at the beginning it might be frustrating it might be confusing it might be glitchy it might be imperfect but at least you're doing it yeah. That's why I tried to do it on everyone mm -hmm. um, this this week, um, and everybody was open to it. But at least it got me. The more it's the same as when you're doing massage. The yeah. more bodies you touch, the more you yeah. learn how to yeah. to find right. things. You cannot be an armchair body worker. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. You just right. can't. So if you're unfortunately if you're if you're not practicing full time or part time and getting a certain like quota of bodies underneath your hands even if that's working on friends and family like it doesn't matter but if you're not if you're not feeling on a regular basis you're kind of at a disadvantage in this game like we need you to be playing with the tissues we need you to be feeling the reflexes so that you start to build a library of oh okay this is what a ball of the foot should feel like when no issues are present. Okay, this is what somebody who has no digestive issues, what their digestive reflexes feel like. Versus, you know, clients, the universe will do that. It'll bring like six clients with the same issue one week. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Um, and that's how you learn. Mm -hmm. Like you deal with rotator cuff issues mm -hmm. one week and it's like you, the body teaches you how to do the rotator cuff. Yeah, isn't that interesting? And it's you the actually same draw thing. from what you learned from the last two, uh, yeah. person you were working on. Exactly. Um, Sam, when you have when you're addressing the hip, pelvic mm -hmm. area, could you do that for me for one second? Yeah. And I want to. So we're we're starting behind the okay. lateral malleolus. Uh huh. Hand goes to the ball. Uh huh. And then we're pressing, rotating, pressing, rotating, pressing, rotating, pressing, okay. rotating until we hit that tendon and then we reset or that ligament rather that's the dorsal pump no i'm sorry that's ankle rotation pump. or that's um hip the hip sciatic reflex and then we do the the dorsal pump and then we do oh. cuboid notch and our final technique is walking the calcaneal surface you cover all of this in your book? Uh, no. So the book itself is just on the assessment portion. Um, I'm writing book number two right now, which is the advanced foot reading. And then after that, I'll be publishing the technique manual with pictures. How much fun. Yeah. But I mean, if you want the technique right now, all you need to do is go to YouTube. I have like seven recordings of this technique, okay. full 60 minute routines plus mini videos that walk you step by step through each of the techniques. It's not a mystery. No. <laughs> Cuz I want like I want you to play with it. Like I want you to get infected by the reflexology virus. <laughs> like that's what I want. Mm -hmm. Um I want you to to help friends, help family. I want you to help clients. I had I was talking at the FSMTA convention in June to um to the successful start students and um one of the students afterwards came to me and said, I'm so glad that you put the videos on YouTube because I had a client that booked for a reflexology session and my manager put me down as, you know, providing that service, but I've never taken training in that. So I watched your video literally an hour before that client came and it got me through the session. I'm like, yes, that's, that's how it gets you. Like, that's, that's, what, that's what we want. First one's always free. Exactly. <laughs> And like with each of the recordings um, that I do, I talk about different things in each of them. Mm -hmm. So we've talked about things during this hour that you won't hear on the other videos. Mm -hmm. You're gonna post this on YouTube? Mm -hmm. Yeah.
Um, just because somebody asked on here, yeah, as soon as we're done on um, this demo, I will go back and post a link to the YouTube channel underneath this video for the people watching right now. Yeah, which you can also just go to youtube.com and search Foot Whisperer, uh, and you'll be able to find the channel. Or if you Google 60-minute reflexology routine or something like that, you should be able to... Towel boy. <laughs> so, so you have the routines online, but you don't actually have each system. No, and that's ah. what that's what differentiates my approach to reflexology, the way that I teach it from other schools, is I'm not trying to teach you, okay, here we're going to manipulate the digestive system. Let me show you how to walk the digestive reflexes. Because although I, I have that as a routine, because it's a, a section of our routine, um, I'm not concerned with teaching you when a client comes in with digestive problems, uh -huh. just press the digestive reflexes. Uh -huh. yeah. Because that defeats the purpose of you learning all the reflexes. Um, and it also might not help your client because of the holistic interconnection of systems. Uh -huh. What if it's not a digestive issue, etc., etc. There are plenty of clients who have digestive issues where it's coming from the hormone system. Of the endocrine system. There are plenty of clients who come in with structural issues who have digestive issues, with immune issues who have digestive issues. Um, so you're actually teaching to point one, to look for the points. Yes, look for the points. Yeah. <clears throat> it may be a digestive issue, but look for the points in the foot because there may be something else affecting yes. the mm -hmm. digestive issue. Exactly. Are, are points the same as markers? Yes. Are, right. hot, are your towels wet as well? Yes, wet and they're wet and mm -hmm. hot. So we soak the towels, we put them in a hot towel cabinet, um, let them warm up for about an hour or so, and uh, then we use them during a session. Mm -hmm. Hello from Ireland. Lena says hi from Nashville. She misses Hello. us. Hey, Lena. <laughs> hey, Lena. Um, <laughs> let's see. Uh, uh, Tara Cornish said hi. Oh, Tara. <laughs> hi from the UK. Um, and then... Angel, just so you know, typically here we use um, unbleached shea butter, but today Sam's using a cream that he has made that we're working on perfecting right now, a specific foot reflexology balm that is grapeseed oil and beeswax with a little bit of peppermint oil in it. Because that's the trend in the industry right now is everybody's making their own balms. And yes. <laughs> so I... It is. It's so fun. We and just do anything that Sally Kay does. <laughs> right. We're just like, Sally Kay, um, who is uh, whose book just came out and who will be here the first weekend of March in Tampa to do her reflex lymph drainage class. Um, who is that? Sally Kay. She is a reflexologist over in the UK who has submitted um, medical publication research for how reflexology affects the lymphatic system mm -hmm. and working with lymphedema clients through the reflexes. She, her book just came out, Reflex Lymph Drainage, uh, which is available on Amazon everywhere. And um, she's just, she's an amazing person, but her modality is also very amazing. Um, it's just fabulous. So we, we had her down last year. She sold out the class in a couple months with 34 seats international people somebody flew from the uk to take yeah. the class in tampa here? which was very weird <laughs> yeah here, here in vacation. tampa mm -hmm. yeah um uh, we're probably going we we have it at one of the local hotels uh, um and yeah we she allowed us to increase the the head count this year to 40 so we'll we'll get more people into that class but it's such a fun group it's such a good time and um she is just her work is wonderful and the people that she the people that she attracts are also very wonderful Erwin, hello from Cyprus. Oh, okay. So we finish our routine with the solar plexus adrenal, just like we started. We finish our routine with the towels, just like we started. And this gives us a bookmark. It's like we start the session the same way we end the session, and the body appreciates that. The nervous system appreciates the consistency. We're doing the exact same routine on both feet. The body appreciates that consistency. The nervous system likes that repetition. We're doing a lot of things three times. The body appreciates that, that knowing what to expect. Cool. And that, as they say, is that. Your feet look so happy. Thank you. Yeah. <laughs> Thank All you, of me is happy.